God War's been in development for about three years, roughly. It's including a pretty, a fairly lengthy pre-production cycle. And basically, it came from Dave Jaffe's head. There were so many ready-made play mechanics and gameplay mechanics in the Greek myths already that it was just like Medusa's head and Zeus's thunderbolts and battling Cyclopses. And that mixed with just my love of the material was like, okay, this is, this is what we gotta do. We gotta do this game. Dave Jaffe came up to me and goes, what do you think about Greek mythology? I was immediately uh, intrigued by it. When they said, hey, we're thinking about Greek mythology for God of War, I was like, yeah, let's, let's definitely do that. The creative director of the game, Dave Jaffe, definitely comes up with a lot of this kind of stuff, and he you know, likes to involve the team in the design. So he comes up with ideas, you know, we sit around, he comes around, asks us our, his famous like one to 10, what do you think about this idea? God of War is our attempt to really elevate the action adventure genre to the next level. We wanted to bring combat, exploration, navigation, puzzle solving, all of sort of the classic elements of the genre, but we wanted to bring those to players in a fresh way, in a way that they haven't really seen before, and also at a scope and at a level and sort of this epic feel that they haven't really gotten before in a game. That's the whole idea behind God of War, is it's not just a game, it's, it's, it's an adventure like a movie. The sheer amount of, of concept art and work that went into developing all the characters and the look and feel of the game is, uh, is pretty unique. I've never seen so much effort put into uh, you know, concepting a game out, making sure that, that every environment is unique and uh, fits in with the theme of the game overall. I gave them my influences. It's really to their credit that they were able to sort of uh, extrapolate uh, what I was really going for into art, amazing art. So. I, I ended up sort of getting what I wanted, which was this high adventure, amazing fantasy setting, which was uh, inspired by the stuff that I grew up with, the movies that I grew up watching. But exactly how the game ended up looking the way it did was really, you'd have to ask the artist. Charlie Wynn has been part of the studio for quite some time, and what he's brought to God of War is um, extremely valuable. A lot of my job is to um, create images of um, what the game feels like. The mood of the game is, is, is dark. Uh, the main character, main character Kratos, is, is a very uh, disturbed character. The things I said to him, I said, brutal, nasty, violent, um, antisocial, pissed off, angry, fuck you. That was my direction to Charlie. Uh, the hardest part about um, making Kratos was that the storyline wasn't really there yet. And so I was trying to create a character that um, didn't have that story behind him yet. I just said, come into work and get angry and see what happens. What they came back with was their versions of anger and the things that they were mad at and the things that, it was really kind of neat because you got to look at the concept art and kind of see how everybody dealt with anger and madness and chaos. The solution was to sort of start stripping away everything. Every time we took away a piece of armor, every time we took away a helmet, a shield, we started seeing more of this animalistic side to this character. Once we got that, it was just an issue of whittling it down, you know, from those 15 images, all of which felt the most brutal, and said, out of all these 15, that's the one. God of War is our attempt to really elevate the action adventure genre to the next level. We're trying to do so much right now. Um, I mean, we want to bring this, um, you know, this experience to, to people, and we want it to be realistic. In order to do that, we have to push the PlayStation 2 as far as it possibly can go. We use uh, a, a, a well-known art package called Maya um, uh, to do almost everything in our, in our game. When we first started the game, it was how do you create beautiful, lush environments that are high polygon count, high texture detailed, beautiful lighting, and just consistent through the game. Technologically, four or five years into a console, you know, most of the, of the big problems have been solved. So it's just a question of doing it better than everyone else. You first start with a sheet. And the sheet is um, also known as collision. That's the, the very bare bones minimum 
level of detail that the player actually interacts on. Any of these walls that the player can't go beyond. So this is the confines of the level. This is what you know what you're actually playing in, but that's not what you see. That's what the game's running in the background. If I turn the sheet off. Now you can see there's actual artwork associated with that. Well, we definitely wanted to make the player feel like they were in uh, ancient Greece. You know, it's to go from really dark, depressing feelings where you feel like, ah, oh, I have to, I just want to get out of here, to, um, you know, very bright and you're in the desert and it's, it's, you know, it's to make you feel like, wow, okay, it's a vast world, you know, it's a really big world out there. God of War is, is it's gonna, it's gonna look real, but it's also gonna have a take to it, you know, like a little bit of a fantasy twist, um, over the top, like blood and guts. I don't think that there's any other PlayStation game that achieves that that's out there. Every character in the game starts out with a, a single pose that every single animation derives from. When well, I'm starting to move like this, bring in the base pose, and then kind of just start to block a few things out. Maybe even with general, just kind of moving the whole character all as one, getting the timing for things, and then building out from the pelvis. So get the pelvis motion right, then get the chest involved with the pelvis, and maybe start doing the arms come back with the legs, and then finish with the head and the fingers. So, sort of whittling down until I get to that right. final look. The original vision, I think, what was what we wanted was very, very brutal. It's funny, because we were like, let's go find some fight scenes um, in movies, and, and that's how we want this guy to move, and that's how nasty we want him to be. And it's weird, because when we thought we'd find all these great movies, m movie fights are really kind of tame when you think about it. And we actually ended up with only two or three movies uh, that really, really obscure films too, that really, when you saw it, you were like, oh my God, that is just some nasty stuff. There's been quite a few uh, gameplay design sessions or, or meetings with the animators where we've, we get extremely, uh, uh, <laughs> we move around a lot. My setup situation as I'm putting enemies into the game and I'm, I'm trying to get them very playable so that they can be placed in levels and go around is this big cartoony shaped, uh, very bright arena. And it's just a big wide open space and I put the guys in that and uh, I fight with them there, I tune them there, I set up all their moves and combos and their reactions. The Medusa head animation, uh, ripping the head off the Medusa, very long, development cycle for that one. It was redone several times. We obsessed over it. I, obsessed, I pissed off everybody. The animations aren't brutal enough. The art's not brutal enough. There's not enough blood. I want this game to make players just go nuts and feel that sense of anger and chaos. We're really, really hammering the quality and trying to get it to be as top-notch as we can get it. There are several other games out there that are, that I would consider that are kind of the top tier in animation, and we're trying to either meet or exceed what they do. People are gonna go, oh my god, this is what action-adventure games have, have, have supposed to have been since the very beginning. I always say this is the game I've been wanting to make since I was a little kid. God of War, from a production perspective, has been extremely challenging. There's a number of areas that, um, you know, we've really been pressed time, money, resources. Making the game was definitely a fight. Uh, me and the team butted heads a lot. And there was this anger, I guess, that built up inside of me that I think I really transferred over to Kratos. And I look at Kratos now and it's like, that's me. We, I think we verbally abuse each other multiple times during the day. It's one of those, it's a great high-low thing. 
we start out the day we're really happy and then throughout the day we get very upset with each other and then happy with each other and then upset and hopefully we can leave and we're happy with each other and then we come back and we're happy with each other again. I'm always the guy that the engineers want to strangle because I try to absolutely push this engine to the max. We've wanted to strangle each other at least once a week. The prospect of beating the shit out of other workers has, uh, you know, occasionally arisen. We, we have not actually had any fist fights on the game yet. Um, no, I, fist fights certainly aren't um, allowed in a professional environment. If we're going to get into a physical fight, it's going to happen in the next three months. We're going into the, the most uh, stressful time of making a game, which is the alpha beta process. Alpha. 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 Alpha, baby. Alpha. So we're an hour from alpha. Nothing's tuned and nothing's finished. What I am is tired. Tired. Tired, uh, tired, and more tired. This is what Alpha is, right? All the pieces are there, but it doesn't play right yet, and it doesn't feel right yet, and... Uh... There are a couple of big bugs that people are working on. If we don't get them by 7, then we'll get them done by 8 or 9 or 10. Three years, and we're almost done. Light at the end of the tunnel. I'm really, I'm so happy we're an hour away from being able to say, at least we have a game. Playtesting is uh, fantastically important, and, and this is the first game that we've, we've really gone to town on, on the playtesting uh, while the game has been in development. We, we'll bring you know, five or six people in from, from uh, the local colleges, and uh, we'll sit them down in front of the latest version of whatever level we've been, uh, we've been building, and we'll watch them play it, and we'll notice all of the things that they don't do right, or all the times that they can't find the way to solve a puzzle because we've obviously not highlighted it well enough, or if they can't see the door in the background, then we'll add an extra light in so it's highlighted. It's really kind of like making, a, you know, it's like making a movie. At the beginning of the project, we decided we were going to build a, a, a playtesting room in our office, um, and uh, that has proved to be a very good decision. There's our huge PlayStation booth. So, so good to be one of the big titles this year, so hopefully it'll get some attention that we think it deserves. I think whether you're into mythology or not, I think you can't deny the power of a game made by passionate people. God of War is a game that uh, anyone can pick up and play and have a really uh, fun experience. You should play God of War because it'll get you laid. This is the adventure that the back of the box has always promised you. God of War is fucking rad. This is, this is our sort of batch of uh, things that you didn't get to see that uh, some of, some of them I'm glad you didn't, and some of them I, I wish you would have, uh, time permitting, but it wasn't, so. Here we go. Okay, now this is actually, this, now this wasn't a deleted level. This was uh, the prototype that the team put together. Uh, I don't even know what the date on this is, but, but you know, three years uh, f ago. And uh, it was really just to get, a, get the basic mechanics, not even tuned or anything, but you know, you could run, you could swim, you could swing, and, uh, if you if you look at this level a little bit, you'll see uh, we certainly didn't reuse uh, any of the main art, but you'll see kind of like that shot there is sort of the precursor to some of the shots we have in the game, uh, the rope swinging mechanic, and a lot of this. So you'll recognize uh, if if you've played the game and remembered the game, uh, you, you'll recognize some of the like the, the the level when you pull into Athens at first. This this bottom section is based on that. Um, and the whole cliffs that you climb here, we actually just sort of ripped these out directly from the demo <clears throat> and uh, built the cliffs level, the cliffs of madness or the cliffs of insanity, I forget what we ended up calling it. Um, God, it's amazing to see this little guy running around. He looks so not like Kratos. Um, that guy there uh, was the original Cyclops who was dying, um, who just never really looked like a Cyclops. He looked just like a big guy with a stick. And then this was the, the room, the, the only room that we built that was like the final room and everything else was kind of rough. And I remember seeing this and going, 
everybody saw this and said, man, this looks awesome. And then we were like, yeah, but how in the hell are we going to get, you know, all the levels in the game looking as good as that? And uh, I don't know if we ended up getting them all looking as good as that, but I think we came a lot closer than I thought we would. This, this level is pretty cool. This was our test level for uh, the Icarus wing. So, when, you know, I I Icarus and uh, Daedalus. Um, the Icarus story where he flew too close to the to the sun with the, with the wings that he had made and the wax melted and he fell to his death, that was sort of the the the, the inspiration for the mechanic. And I, I still love this. I, I absolutely wish this had made it into the game. Um, we just you know it really came down to time and going you know what let's focus let's get our fighting really good and let's get our platforming better and let's get our puzzles working and, and maybe we can come back to this and as is often the case you just never have the chance to so i'd love to see something like this uh you know in future god of war titles um because i think it's a great uh, it's just fun i mean it's fun to fly around and what was cool about this is it wasn't just a flying level it was you know, you could land and you could walk around, and it, it was very a seamless experience. Versus, you know, now it's time for the flying level. So that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, I look at this now and I'm like, damn, we should have gotten that in. It would have been awesome. These were the original harpies. They were a lot bigger. They still read better. They look awesome, but uh, we just realized we needed more of like a bat-like, small-like little annoyance enemy. Um, these guys played like the skeletons basically, flying versions of the skeletons, and there just wasn't much of a difference in gameplay, so we ended up kind of shrinking them down and making them bats. And this was what we call the mounting the titan level, which is Kronos the giant titan in the desert. And sadly right now the only way you get on the titan is uh, through a movie, and originally this was how it was going to be. You see this big thing, it's like a big watermelon in the background, that's actually Kronos uh, and Tobin, the designer, he's got them kind of moving towards the player, and those things that are falling are like mountains that are crumbling and stuff. So it's kind of like Kronos is, is rushing towards the player, crawling, and you're trying to run ahead of him in these platforming sections so that you can ultimately jump onto the structure that's on his back, and that'll lead you up to the temple. And I still love that idea. I, I really, really wish we could have done it. And it was just, we showed this to the, the tech guys, and we showed it to the artists, and they were just like, dude, that's, that's going to take forever. This, this is, was the original boss. There was a boss that originally, um, uh, look at that, that's awesome, that originally guarded Pandora's box. And again, we just didn't have time. And I know it's lame that uh, that's the one thing I regret about the Pandora design is that there are no bosses that uh, guard the box. You have the Minotaur boss down below, and then we've got this conveyor belt section, and that's kind of it. And we just, we just ran out of time. But this was originally pretty cool. It was... You know, you had this moving platform up above, you had this giant kind of harpy vulture in the center uh, that was guarding the box, You and she had these eggs scattered all around the level, and in order to sort of entice her to fly around, you'd have to go find her eggs and break the eggs, and you'd kind of take the little baby birds inside, and you'd kind of carry them around and use them as bait. And again, not only was it kind of a cool mechanic, because you were having to get, you were slower as you carry these things around, um, but also I think it really helped with the character of Kratos. I mean, here he is, you know, cracking open eggs and ripping out little infant birds and using them for his own, uh, his own desires uh, and, and really pissing off this mama bird I thought was pretty cool. So here's just another quick idea. These are almost like little sketches for levels, you know, where you, you have a big open environment and then you've got the walls come down and it becomes a maze and you either do something and the walls come back up or it's on a timer. I mean, we did tons of these things, you know, where I'd have an idea or a designer would have an idea and it was like, you know, tr try something like this. So this level uh, is actually a level that we, we went so far as that we showed the press, we got it in magazines, and th this, this was really a hard cut for us to make, um, and for, especially for me to make. Um, I, I love the mechanic of it, and I love the, the platforming and the concept. And the concept was that you're riding this elevator, and um, you know if you get knocked off, um, obviously you'll die. And if you get off the elevator, the idea was it was going to originally be being chased by this massive sandstorm. And the elevator was really the only thing. It was sort of a magical elevator that protected you from the sand. And if you got off the elevator, um, the elevator would bypass you and the sandstorm would engulf you and kill you. And we just, the two things we didn't have time to do is we didn't have time to tune it and we didn't have time to build the sandstorm. But what I loved was this whole idea of, you know, getting off the elevator and having to catch back up with it. Um, so, you know, it, you'd have these little forks in the road and either you'd be forced, like coming up, you'd be forced to get off the elevator 
uh, or you could choose different paths. Um, if you took one path, it was more combat heavy. One path was more platform heavy. And as you can see, I mean, we had this pretty much finished from a standpoint of uh, the art and the setup, but we were missing the big sandstorm and we were missing the uh, the tuning time to really make this fun. And so it ended up getting cut. This I love. This was great. This is great. I love this for the elevator. Now it gets smaller. I guess we, we talked about putting this in the actual, uh, oh, see, they suck. Whoever played this couldn't keep up with the elevator, but that was the whole idea, trying to keep up with the elevator. So it's tough. It's really tough when you have to cut ideas that you're really passionate about out of the game, but uh, you, you do so so you can make the other ideas that you do have in the game shine even brighter. So it's sort of a constant process, or it's a constant aspect of the process that's just a really tough thing that you go through. But... Uh, I think it's worth it because it makes the overall product better. Some of the earlier characters that, uh, that had been played around with, um, uh, some of them, again, just didn't feel right for the, for the, uh, for the time period. Um, some of them either felt overdressed or felt too fantasy. A lot of the concepts, too, got, got very detailed. There were lots of flowing things and there was lots of hair and there was lots of, of things that if we had to just model it, it probably would have been a little bit tougher to, to pull it off. There was one character I remember when I first saw it that had kind of a, um, almost kind of a, a tribal feel to it, a very kind of African feel to it, uh, which I thought was, was pretty cool. Uh, didn't say Greek, but I, at, at, the, at the same time when I looked at that, I thought, you know, you could, that would be a pretty cool character to work with. We went through images of the lone wolf kind of characters where uh, you might have a hero with a little baby or a dog on his back. Um, so just to kind of give something different, you know, about the character and something that you can kind of relate to. One of the original concepts behind the hero for God of War was to come up with a guy who was, his, his whole face was encased in a mask. And we thought that going with a mask would be, uh, you know, being able to paint his face in broader strokes so that when you were playing the game, he still had a lot of personality and you could still sort of read that when you saw the mask. But when we actually got it in the game, it ended up feeling very soulless and it didn't feel like the guy had a personality. That was, that was always one of the big, big elements that we were dealing with. Uh, you know, and it was difficult because, um, you know, we would often hear, it's not Greek enough, <laughs> and we're like, what does that mean? I'm using a, a actual, uh, you know, sometimes because we would use, we'd take it right from a Greek, um, some Greek sources, you know, and it was, it was very Greek, but I think what we really started seeing was, okay, no, it's not, um, it's not Greek enough according to what the general public knows. And that's kind of what we, what we had to go towards. These are, again, uh, very traditional. Some of these were very traditional kind of Greek images. And again, again, the more traditional it got, the more armor we put on him, the more he lost his, uh, his individualism. Every time we put something on, you know, Dave felt like, oh, he doesn't look brutal anymore. And, and we started realizing brutal also kind of related to the primal part of him, you know, and, and so we did spend a lot of time going through that, and, but uh, in the end we ended up still taking his clothes off, and that's what we went with, so. When I first saw this from Charlie, it was the first time that I really saw the brutal nature and the violent nature and the sort of the animalistic quality that would really become the foundation for Kratos. And I think starting to see these images was just like, uh, sort of confirmation that, th that this idea could really work and instead of giving him a, a traditional sword uh, going with these sort of chain blades was going to be much more dynamic and fluid and really fun to play with. The main goal for the character in the game was always to create someone that uh, looked uh, really brutal and really nasty and really violent. Instead of sort of going down the traditional route of a iconic Greek hero with the, with the plume helmet and the uh, the skirt and the toga and the sandals. We wanted someone who really made the player feel like he was being able to unleash his dark side. So the idea was always, how can we make him look more brutal? How can we make him look more violent and impulsive and nasty? And that desire always superseded sort of historical accuracy. So while you look at this guy and he may not totally feel at home in ancient Greece from a costume standpoint, 
uh, I think he achieves the greater purpose, which is to give players a character that they can play who really does let them just go nuts and uh, unleash the nasty fantasies they have in their head. So uh, the idea on the environments and, and uh, trying to create a Greek world was trying to create a feeling that uh, reminded you of, of Greece and that didn't feel too fantasy. So we were trying to walk that fine line between a, a fantasy game environment and a traditional Greek environment. And so part of it was, was again, trying to get stuff that made it feel Greek, not Roman, but Greek. Okay, when we first uh, start con concepting our uh, environment, it wasn't really defined as levels, you know. We picked out the uh, important locations such as Pandora and Athens and Hades and all I knew is like the game should feel really big, which means there's no like cramped area. It's more like like challenge against the god and like huge monsters. So the, the look of the environment should be like like huge, you know. So with each of the environments, what we tried to do was. Um, kind of move you through the world using color uh, to kind of uh, help move Dave's story along and kind of emphasize the emotional uh, impact of, of what he was trying to, of the story he was trying to tell. But at the same time, if, if I've just come out of, uh, of the ocean uh, where I'm battling the Hydra, um, where we've got, in that case, you know, there's, there's more kind of greens and, and, and blues and things like that, uh, I don't want to go into that same uh, scenario color-wise again. Uh, it's like if I did the whole game in black and white, you'd get probably bored with it after a while. So one of the, also one of the interesting aspects, um, especially in the, um, in the Pandora section, was a lot of times you'll see multiple iterations on, on statues as well. And one of the reasons was that one of David's idea was he wanted those statues to come to life, whether it was Atlas or Poseidon rising out of the water. The, things that were in that environment, the objects, um, the architecture, those types of things reflect what was going on again with David's story. Um, so in Pandora as an example, uh, that whole sequence is about uh, an architect who in David's mind is, is, is basically gone mad. And so the idea was the, the structures, the traps, the visual look of that should begin to reflect uh, kind of a kind of a madman in, in, in some instances. I did that piece even the level of the design wasn't solid yet so but my, my own uh, interpretation I was thinking it's like things are like there's no gravity but at the same time things are like kind of shifting all the time and this infinite distance in the back things are flying falling exploring the Mountain Olympus, that one, that one particularly, we don't, it's not for the game art. It's more like, okay, we want to talk about Mountain Olympus. So where's the image? That kind of thing. The goal of the, the world of God of War was really to create uh, a place that felt like, you know, a giant theme park ride, you know, or a, a giant set on one of these great high adventure movies. and. Um, places that you'd really want to explore and, and spend time in and really feel like you were having this grand adventure. And I think these guys, you know, week after week continually uh, were able to come up with set pieces and ideas that they, they just top themselves constantly and continually. And they've really given us this great world to play in. And uh, I, I think they did an amazing job. And I'm, I'm so grateful as a player that I get to actually play in this space. When it came to the characters and monsters and creatures that, that our hero is going to encounter, we're dealing with characters and creatures that everybody is familiar with. Um, Medusas, Cyclops, um, Centaurs, Minotaurs. One of the things that we had to do with all the characters, and I think you'll see this as you look through the concept art, one of the things that was very important to me was that when somebody looked at, at any of our characters, that they knew what they were. So what we could do basically there, as long as the character was down on all fours and I had three heads, you probably would accept that character as a, as a Cerebus, whether it was a werewolf, 
whether it was a dinosaur, you know, again, you would still accept that in our world and what we were doing in terms of building the mythology we were building, you would accept that. As far as a, a game creature is concerned, mostly what was fascinating me was the, the deep sea creatures and how freaky they look. And I was trying to pull up on some of that and uh, did uh, a number of different types uh, of hydras. I was told okay, Ares would be uh, maybe 90% 90% elemental, five or ten percent human. You know, and so that's kind of what I was going for on these beginning ones. Um, he's just pure power, you know, almost like he's this unstoppable force. And then, you know, Dave liked it. It's just he wasn't sure how we would do it. Probably was a slow transition towards being more human. So it's still kind of a huge guy, but he's got all this armor on that allows him to do all these things. So the idea was, again, to move a character um, into something that again would be a little bit more in the horror direction and again what it allowed us to do was get characters that were still reminiscent of what they were supposed to be in Greek mythology but were uniquely ours. Um, so once we started moving in that direction again it opened up uh, a whole new kind of avenue of ways to explore those characters. What we really wanted to do was keep people uh, immersed in the mythology, in the Greek mythology, but give them a different kind of experience when it came to, to the characters and the creatures.